Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Kubernetes and Ceph RBD. So we installed Kubernetes the really hard way last video or a previous video in this series. And now I'm gonna continue adding Ceph and adding Portainer and some other stuff in order to show off how to connect everything together in a good mix. So you can actually use Ceph with Kubernetes and deploy a bunch of stuff. So uh, if we switch over to my screen here, you can see that we have our Kubernetes cluster up and running here with our dashboard and so on. Um, so I have followed this guide here, Block Devices and Kubernetes, which is available on the Kubernetes uh, or the uh, Ceph documentation. Very good resource. Uh, it first tells us that we need to create a pool. So I'm going to create a pool here, call it uh, Kubernetes. And then I'm going to say that it should be replicated. And I want three size and so on. So a very simple one I want is to be RBD application. And then I will create that pool. So it will be ready for us. Then we can switch back to the console again here with all this. And I'm going to go to another node here. And what we're going to do first is to initialize this pool. So RBD pool init Kubernetes. So we will initialize that pool so it will be ready to use for RBD. And then we also need to get a user for this one. So we will run uh, sudo ceph auth get or create client Kubernetes on the monitor and which should be the profile RBD, OSD should be the profile RBD for the pool Kubernetes and the manager should be profile RBD for the pool Kubernetes. So let's do that and we will get this here and this is something that we need to keep as uh, so I will store that in my setup here. And then I'm going to continue with this guide. So next thing we're going to do is run sudo ceph uh, mon dump. And here you will get your FSID and your uh, IPs for your cluster. And we're going to run with version 1 so far because the version 2 pro messaging protocol is not supported yet. But I have both in my cluster here. So it should be just fine. Uh, so switching back to my client here, the first thing we will look at is the CSI config map. That is what we created first. So here we will put in our cluster IP ID and the monitors. So we have that here. Uh, so this is something that we need to apply to so cube CTR apply and the file CSI config map. We'll put that in. Uh, next one, we have this CSI uh, KMS config map. And it's not defined at the moment. So let me put that in. It should look something like this. So it is a config map and it's just having this encryption for KMS. Uh, nothing strange there. So let's apply that file. Next up, we will look at the uh, Ceph config map. Looks like this. So it's pretty much the config map with the authentication things here. Nothing uh, special about this one. Uh, just apply that as well. But there's a bunch of configuration here. Next up, we need to look at the secret. So the uh, CSI. Uh, RBD secret. And here we will need to add our secret. So we have the username ID of uh, Kubernetes. And then we will put in the secret that we just created here. So that's the key that we got in our earlier call over here. This key. Take it from there. Adding things here is a little bit wonky. So let's try to do it like that instead. So shift insert works fine in some cases in these consoles. 
uh, and then we need to load that secret as well. So now we have all the configuration in our cluster. So now we need to apply the provisioner. And there is on the guide this huge where you get the provisioner uh, for Arbuck and just load it into your cluster. And then you need to load in the CSI node plugin. Also a link from their web page. And then we're going to fetch a couple of YAML files here. So one for the RBD provisioner and one for the CSI plugin. And I think it's the CSI RBD plugin provisioner, which has this replicas three here. And my cluster is up so small, so I don't want three replicas taking up a bunch of resources. So I just switch it down to one. If you have a production environment, just use this uh, as it is. So Kubernetes control, apply this uh, script here as well. CSI provision, uh, RBD plugin uh, provisioner, and the CSI RBD plugin YAML. And so that's a couple of pods that will be created. So if we look at cube CTL uh, get pods A, we now can see that we have the CSI plugin up here, which is three that should be ready times two, so it's actually creating two separate setups of those. And then CSI RBD provisioner is seven. So this is, of course, a lot more resources that needs here. I actually set my cluster up before, so I had uh, 20 gigabytes of disk space on each of the nodes, but I had to change up my worker nodes to have 30 gigabytes of disk space because these plugins are a gigabyte uh, in size each, and you deploy seven of them, yeah, that takes a bit of space, of course. So um, that is going on at the moment. So now one of the plugins is running. Now the other one is running. So now we're just waiting for the provisioner uh, to get up and running. Last but not least, we need to create the storage class that we're going to use. Uh, so let's check that out, the CSI. RBD SC, the storage class. And I just call this Ceph RBD, so I know the name of it. And then we need to put in the cluster ID. And then we have a couple of different here. We have the secret, the namespace for the secret, uh, control X bond secret name, namespace for that, and the stage node secret, and the namespace for that. Reclaim policy delete and allow volume expansion true and uh, mount options discard. So this is something that we need to put in as well as a configuration for the storage class, CSI RBD SC. And if everything is up and running, which it is, and we have a storage class, we are now the label, could now um, actually go in and uh, start portainer. So uh, first off, we will add the repository of portainer from uh, GitHub. So put that in there. And then we will run the deployment script. And here we say install, uh, install upgrade, create the namespace of portainer for the portainer. We want to create a load balancer. So we will actually get an IP. We want to force a TLS. We want to use the image tag of 2.21.2, which is the version available now, and the persistent storage class. If we don't do this, it will look for something called default and will fail. Um, in my case, I know the name is Ceph RBD, so that's the storage class I will use here. So that deploying this, and now it gives us a little bit incorrect information here because we are using our own load balancer, but you could use this in order to uh, go into the service with the right IP. Uh, so let's check here, get pods and dash A. So we should get a portainer uh, here that's now running and should soon be uh, up and available. And we can also look at SVC. 
And if we got the portainer down here, we see that that got the IP of 200. So it's, we didn't give it anything. So our metal LB will just provide an IP for it. And in this case, it bought 200. We will wait a little bit more until it's actually started up here. So now portainer is deployed and up and running. So let's take a new browser window here and go to 200. And here we have <laughs> Nginx available on 200. I think the port was for uh, 9443. And if we go in here and proceed, it will open up Portainer. It needs a password. So I'm just gonna copy paste a really complicated password there and create a user. And now we have this where we have this wizard and it says either you will add another environment or you will proceed with a local version of your Kubernetes. So let's proceed with a local one. So here we have our Kubernetes cluster. Let's do a live connect. So now it will find all the services and configurations and applications that are running in my cluster. So we can go into cluster and get details here, see what's up and running and what's available. We can do some setup. For instance, here we have our load balancer. So I will allow external load balancer because that is what we are using. Um, later down here, we have more uh, things like this metrics API. I have never gotten that to work because we haven't uh, deployed the metrics uh, API server, but that is something that you might want to do in the future. It will help you with some of the deployments in Portainer. Portainer is something that I just started playing with. Uh, down here, you see that you have our storage class here of Ceph RBD, so I will turn that on. I will also add this read, write, and execute, so that is available. And let's save this communication now. So now we have a more configure, better configured portainer. So let's see if we can deploy something here. Let's go into applications. So let's deploy, let's say, Nginx. So let's go in here and say test, and then we will look down here and see if we can find uh, something called Nginx. Uh, and we can name it testing like that. So this deployment will be named testing. So that is the prefix it will use. If there is any extra values that we want to put in or extra things that we will want to de deploy, we could go into custom values. But I just think that in this case, I will just install it as is and um, then configure it later on. I'm, I'm not sure why the configuration is not a part of this first page here. So you can actually add a bunch of config already. Um, but it seems that that doesn't work. So uh, you need to do that kind of configuration afterwards. So uh, you go in here. Currently it is deployed, it seems. So let's see if it got an IP here, load balancer, and we got 102, and let's see, here we have Nginx. It's deployed and working. So this is probably the hardest way you can do in order to install Nginx. You create a Kubernetes cluster the hardest way you can, manually installing each of the different processes. You connect it to a Ceph cluster to have a storage class, so you can actually create images and so on in Ceph. And then you install Portainer that you could use in order to manage your installed applications. And then you use a web GUI to deploy Nginx and get this screen. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.